Welcome to Motorsports Tech Talk. And we got your hosts here, Brian and Eric. It's me. And uh, yeah, so basically we decided to make a podcast because uh, we spend hours and hours always just chatting around. We decided might as well just record it and let everyone else uh, hear our ramblings. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we, we go pretty deep into motorsports um, and then, you know, new cars and stuff sometimes, different technology. Um, so I don't, we thought it was pretty interesting. You know, we, we go technical sometimes. Uh, so, you know, maybe we can help someone learn a thing or two and just discuss different ideas about what's going on in, in motorsports. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so basically we thought, well, we'll put this together. We can, we can talk uh, kind of tech stuff, news, all that kind of stuff, motorsports, cars, yep. kind of anything, anything we feel like, kind of what we already, already were doing, but <laughs> <laughs> now we get to record it and have anyone who has some time on their hands and feels like <laughs> listening. Yeah. Maybe, you know, working on their car, have something in their ear, just going to work, whatever, you know, whatever you want to do. Yeah, why not? So I guess, uh, you know, we can start off with some introductions as uh, they're probably in order. So obviously, I'm Brian. Uh, I have a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering. And uh, yeah, we uh, currently I'm working at uh, Toyota Motors North America. Uh and uh, we're actually both working at a major OE. Eric, you're at a uh, you're at Ford. Oh, well, that's right. So, and one thing we just said, wanted to get out of the way real quick that none of our opinions uh, uh, expressed are are uh, are going to be. They don't represent uh, Toyota. Yes, Motors North America or Ford Motor Company. That is correct. So, um, we just wanted to get that out of the way. Yeah, <laughs> get make the, it clear get that you know lego mumbo jumbo out of there just uh just in case i i don't know i don't know i don't think they'll be too worried about this at least at least for now so <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm sure they don't care uh but you know it's good to have everyone know uh especially since we might get into it later but you know who won the <laughs> car of the year performance car of the year for motor trend oh no i didn't see that <clears throat> well it's the GT500, oh, possibly oh. the mm. greatest performance car of the year. <laughs> performance mm. car you can buy but right that's, now. But that's just your opinion. That's just my opinion. That's just your opinion. You know, it has nothing to do with the fact that I work for Ford. Yeah, of course, of Wait. course, of course, of course. Um, and so, and then just to continue, I guess, with uh, my background, now that we got that out of the way. But yeah, so I'm at Toyota now, but uh, actually we both used to work together at uh, Pratt & Miller Engineering. Some of you guys might... Uh, might know that as the home of Corvette racing, although maybe GM doesn't want you to know that, but yeah, but, uh, but it doesn't yeah. really change. That's where it happens. Yep. That's where that happens. They do most of Chevy's racing programs. Uh, Eric was on some of the automotive and motorsports programs there. And then later briefly later did some defense work. I was mostly just on the defense side. So, yep. uh, that's where this, this friendship, if you want to call it that, uh, work acquaintances <laughs> work acquaintances uh, now co-hosts uh, yep. uh that's where it blossomed so then you know we went our separate ways uh but you know still still always keeping in touch yep talking uh, about just more more car stuff yeah yeah no one i mean not many people want to hear about cars all the time, except for basically our group of friends. So yep. sometimes you got to, whenever we see each other, we just got to kind of let it out, let it out. It's kind of <laughs> like word vomit. Just can't stop it. So, um, yeah. And then as far as out of work, um, there's, uh, there's, there's been a lot of racing I've done over the years, uh, Starting... Give, them a, give them that that spec Miata highlight you... <laughs> first. First, just start. Yeah. So uh, actually, this year I uh, did my first full season of spec Miata and was able in the last race of the season get my my first win. I was pretty mm -hmm. happy about that. It's pretty sweet, dude. Um, but and then before that, I just did a lot of uh, Champ Car Endurance Series. Uh, back when I was first Chump Car, uh, I was st starting off there. Worked 
racing with some friends from work and everything and then ended up wanting to do a little more of a i guess a challenge my my driving abilities get everyone in the same have everyone in the same car try to do some uh some more spec style racing so naturally you move to the greatest <laughs> platform ever made yeah the uh the the miata it's, yeah it's a it's a car and it's uh it's okay but you know you got to do what you got to do sometimes i suppose but uh but yeah so uh that's kind of that's kind of been what's taken up a lot of my time recently but uh but enough about me what about uh this uh, this guy over here what about me yeah um so you know brian introduced me but americ uh same same degree uh bachelor's in mechanical engineering um like most engineer car nerds um I, you know did formula sae when we were in school um yeah and then came up to michigan worked for pratt met met my co-host there mm -hmm, mm -hmm. worked on some some projects and things um got a good decent i suppose learning experience there um and then i spent the last <clears throat> excuse me uh about two years racing um for a professional race team uh, i started as a, a data engineer or a dag um anybody looking to get into racing any if any of you are in college or whatever if you're an engineer that's that's what you'll start at um so so i did that for a couple years uh, i worked on gt4 car gt3 cars um yeah, mostly GT4 to be clear, but you know, little, <laughs> little bit. Um, and then yeah, now now I work for Ford. Um, yeah, so that's that's pretty sweet. Outside of work, I uh, did some of the amateur racing. You know, um, did a couple races with my co-host here. Uh, those crap can endurance races, so uh, lemons or chump car at the time um yeah and then i i actually took my bike out to the track ended up having a lot of fun with that so i've been doing a lot of two-wheel things lately um and then our our pro driver on the race team conned me into getting a cart um so i've i've taken it out to one practice session you know i, I recently bought it uh, and hoping to get ripping on that uh next summer so yeah, that thing that thing is fast yeah it's it's an x30 for anybody listening um so 125 cc two stroke it's comparatively to to your other carts it, it moves yeah pretty he good just, he just dove right into the deep end there which you know it, it's a it's kind of a i think among our friend group it's it's kind of the way we do things we don't we're not going to do track days all year just to figure it out just add uh, why don't you just come with us to a race and just uh, do some wheel to wheel for your first time on track? Why not? Might as well try something like that. Or yeah, why start from the baby carts when you could just go? Yeah, go fast. Yeah, actually, our uh, well, our first race together, my first endurance race in Lemons. Um, like I had I had driven the Formula car, right? Mm -hmm. You know the mm -hmm. FSAE car. Um, you know, and done some autocrosses and things like that. But for getting on track, that was really my first time. Um, so the day before, uh, our mutual friend signed me up for the advanced group mm -hmm. in a track day, which was fine, honestly. Um, <laughs> I, I kept pace or was faster, so worked out pretty well. And then um, and then went into a wheel-to-wheel -wheel race the next day. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's it pretty sweet. Yeah, what, ha what happened after that? We should... Uh... Oh, we're not going to talk about, but yeah, we, we don't have to talk about that. <laughs> um, well, I, I suppose you brought it up. Another guy <laughs> used the vehicle I was driving to flip himself. Yeah, I think, I mean, honestly, that's how I would describe it. Uh, that they would describe it as him ruining their weekend. But yes, that is how they described that's it. Exactly. Um, that's, that's how their kids described it when they walked up to us. But that's yes, that's maybe a, a story for another day. It is. Yeah, I, I'd, <laughs> I'd be happy to go into that, um, you know, but, but right yeah. now we're still trying to do introductions. So it's, it's, uh, 
we've passed the old flipping story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we, uh, uh, we'll revisit it many times. Many, uh, I'm many, sure we many will. times. So that being said, a lot of Ford like Fiestas. Focus? Focus. There's a focus. focus. Yeah. A lot of Ford Focuses I've seen roll a gingerman. Yeah, it so. wasn't wasn't the only one I've seen roll a gingerman, so it's 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 definitely a pattern. It's not yeah. and, and Eric wasn't involved in the other one, so Yeah. You know, it's not he wasn't the common denominator there. <laughs> it was the it was the focus. So Yep. Okay, so I mean you go you have a little background on us. We'll I think from here we'll just go into maybe some news. So yeah, yeah, I mean, just, you know, biggest thing right now. Give it to them. Yeah, the, the big, big, big thing that I think everyone who's even remotely interested in racing has seen this week uh, is the, the whole uh, Gro Grosjean crash at the at Bahrain, uh, the Formula One race. It was quite a big incident, uh, raised a lot of questions, concerns, uh, mostly about safety, but uh, one thing it definitely showed us was I mean, what the first thing Lewis Hamilton wanted to make clear to everyone was that this is dangerous and he's he does a really dangerous job and yes. we should all thank him for his his, his service. service. Uh, his... Yeah. Uh just as a as a quick side note for anybody listening to give, to give you a a basis of how we feel. Um Formula 1 is dangerous, obviously. We just saw Grosjean's crash. Yeah. Um but as people who are into racing we maybe don't have as much sympathy as we should because uh, I would do that for free and or give all my money to drive a Formula One car. So, yeah, just just so everybody listening knows <laughs> kind of where we sit. Right. Um, yeah. It's not that I don't think they're doing. Yeah. It's not that we don't think they're doing a rough job. It's just we would do it in a heartbeat. If, yeah. If uh, given the opportunity, if we had the opportunity. So. Uh, but yeah, you know, that was, yeah, that's just Lewis's way. He always has to throw that in there, maybe make it a little bit about himself, but that's okay. You know, <laughs> but, but really the, I guess the main conversation was, um, was mostly around safety. How could like, how could a car just instantly combust like, the way it did? And, and yeah. how could it just spear through that, that guardrail? Why is that guardrail rail kind of set up like that? Um, lots of different things, but I think the biggest thing that we kind of saw come out of it was mainly just that even though that he didn't come out completely uninjured, like that's still super surprising how he was able to, to basically walk out of there and, and, and you know, withstand that g huge G force from hitting that barrier. And then let alone get out of there without being really injured. And, and also his fire safety gear, keeping him from getting too seriously burned. So it's it's definitely i mean for one it's definitely a testament to the halo that was kind of mm -hmm. one thing that came out of there just yeah. uh how I, I think without that i mean grosjean said it himself that he, he doesn't think he would have made it out of there without it which i agree i mean looking at the photos and everything you can see the damage that was kind of right there on the halo uh that would have just been his head if if it wasn't there so that that would not have been good uh but I think the another thing and uh, wanting to kind of with this podcast being more of a, a tech talk as it's aptly named, uh, mm. get kind of into some of the tech uh, that that kind of helped them get out of there. So I think the, the one thing we're, we wanted to focus on uh, this week was the uh, fire safety gear, because, I mean, he was in there for I think it was I think when they timed it, it was around 18 seconds. And most of the time that those three or the. The standard of suit that they use is is usually rated for about eight seconds so i mean that's before and that's in a controlled test of course it's not it's right. gonna be a little different in real life but but he was in there for much longer and he did experience some burns but uh but i think it could have been much worse for if a couple things happened uh for, for one it's pretty common for race uh, formula one drivers but he has had his visor down that's that's one thing i I see a lot of, especially if you're in like uh, sedans and stuff like that, racing in, in GT cars. Mm -hmm. It's not very common to have your visor down because you're inside of something. You don't have to worry about bugs and stuff getting in your eyes. So right. a lot of times people keep it up. And maybe if they have kind of cheaper helmets that don't have good anti-fog on their visor and stuff, they, they kind of need to, to keep it down. So 
Uh, so he had his visor down. If without that, I'm sure it would have been much, much worse. I mean, you, you can put it down in the crash, but it's, you know, it might not be your first reaction to. So. Right. Yeah. I mean, the chain of events has already started. Of course. You know, by the time you get to a crash. So, you know, you want to, you don't want to crash, but you want to go into the crash um, prepared, right? And this of course. is this is why you would always keep your visor down, um, and why you don't ever, you know, skimp, right? Of course, of course, yeah. Don't just buy the minimum standard. Now they they go kind of above and beyond. At least what most club racing and 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 club racing and like SEC and NASA that kind of stuff. What you'll see there, even. And I, I'm not sure about like uh, IMSA, how intense they get with it, but I noticed that Grosjean, he has the he has the underwear on. He has a full set of Nomex underwear, and on top of that, he has the latest standard of uh, racing gear: suit, shoes, socks, um, gloves. So all the all the latest stuff there. So uh, I guess one thing to note is very recently we did have a, a new standard come out for driving gear. Um, so uh, most uh, most people in the kind of club racing segment might not have s- kind of seen it yet unless you've ordered gear recently. Um, but there's actually a couple changes. So the, the kind of the previous standard, at least on the FIA side, which is usually what I go off of, there's SFI as well, but they, they mostly follow kind of what the FAA guidelines are. Um, but um, but basically there's a, there's a couple changes. So the previous standard was the, FIA 8856-2000. Uh, now the latest is uh, 8856-2018. So, um, but basically there's a couple uh, things they added. Uh, they increased the standard for uh, fabric burn through. So basically uh, they, uh, they, they do the test while the fabric, fabric is actually stretched to make sure there's no, you know, because as it can be, you know, like, in areas where your kind of elbows and arms and stuff, that area can be stretched. So that, that can be kind of the weak point. Um, and I believe they also might've slightly increased the, the time to burn through. Um, and then the other notable changes are, uh, both the hand, kind of your hands and your, your ankles. So they extended kind of the, the cuff for the, 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 uh, the gloves, as well as the cuff for the boots that kind of comes up in your sh- suit to kind of have more of that overlap. To, to give yourself the best chance of not having that little gap that you might have there be the the weak point of the of your suit. So I'm pretty sure they've been running that standard for at least a year. Uh, most people, I mean, gear hasn't really been available on the market with this standard until very somewhat recently this year. But because uh, uh, I, I actually myself, I was looking at a new suit and I saw these new standards because uh, well, I guess one of the other notable things is now driver suits they uh, have a expiration now before they didn't. So now it's a 10 year expiration. Uh, I mean, and for you guys trying to think, oh, I'll just get the older one and then it'll never expire. But there's still, I guess for everyone, the new standard, I think even club racing is supposed to be adopted by 2029. So basically if you buy a suit right now, you're either expiring in 10 years by the suit itself, if you have the new standard, or you're gonna have to get the new standard in that many years. I imagine, you know, something like Champ Car or NASA or, or SCCA, they might they might delay that kind of slowly grandfather it in and stuff. But right, and but you know, I, I want to throw out just because they might let you slide doesn't necessarily mean you want you to. Yeah, exactly. You know, um, so with our amateur racing, we're obviously not at these levels. Um, you know, and the. The factors of danger aren't the same, but let's consider who built your race car. <laughs> For most of us, it's <laughs> us in a garage, not a multi billion dollar program. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and I mean, fuel will combust to the same. Yep. Right. Mm-hmm. And we just saw Grosjean's crash, you know. Um, so maybe. Just consider that, uh, you know, going to the old standard because you need to replace a suit, you can. Um, but if you can afford to not, maybe uh, consider getting getting the new standard. Yeah, you know, like, don't don't take that risk if you don't need to. Of course, yeah, and it 
from what I've seen, there's really no cost up or anything for it. It's, I mean, the only cost difference is if you're buying a year old suit, kind of new, uh, overstock versus the the newest standard. You're, there'll be a difference there, but from what I've seen, there hasn't really been an increase in cost for that stuff. Maybe, maybe you might feel it's a little less comfortable or something like that, or maybe the suits are a little bit thicker. But uh, for the most part, I mean, it's just I I know the way I am when I'm in the car. I don't want to have to. I don't want to even think about you know if um if it's safe or anything i just want to get on with my business and not have yeah. to want to go race yeah i don't want to be like oh crap did i if i were to crash into this guy in front of me and go into a giant fireball will it be okay like yeah. or did i skimp every step of the way exactly so and you don't have to I mean, most of the time in most motorsports gear um yeah the more you spend it's kind of more of a comfort thing the more comfortable it'll be like maybe the same suit the suit that meets the same standard the you know the four hundred dollar one versus the fifteen hundred dollar one it it's just gonna be a lot the more expensive one's gonna be more breathable it's gonna be lighter a lighter mm -hmm. uh fabric and and so yeah it'll just be more comfortable i mean i recently updated my suit and i my old sparco my old sparco rs rs4 i believe it was uh it basically it weighed about three pounds and then my new one weighed two pounds which you know it's it's not it's a pound difference but when the whole thing weighs three that's <laughs> right that's a pretty big difference well and it's what covers your whole body right that's a pound less of yeah thermal insulation i guess you have yeah um, so so so, the, so what'd you end up buying uh i got a omp i can't it's one something all their stuff is one as yeah. long as it's not first yeah yep. <laughs> can't do that then it's okay but uh it's like one evo or, or something like okay. that okay. um actually i got it from the got it from the uk it's uh at least before now where the dollar's getting a little weak the u.s dollar yeah. uh earlier in this year when it wasn't uh the exchange rate was extremely favorable for ordering stuff from the uk so I was I couldn't normally justify a suit that expensive, but it was it was basically almost half off. So yeah, I can't say no to that. I can't say I can never say no to half off. So That's a good deal. Um, but yeah, you know, they but both my old suit and the new suit uh, meet the same standard. But yeah, one was just a, the new one's a pound lighter, so it's just it, it and it feels it feels a lot better. It feel cooler in the car, and that that's important too. You don't want to have too much uh, heat exhaustion or something if you don't have a cool shirt in there. But, um, but yeah, so, uh, I guess bring it back to the, the incident. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, he still, uh, Grosjean, he, he still did suffer some burns. Uh, one thing that, uh, we noticed was, uh, his, his boot came off actually as he was getting out of the car. Yep. I mean, if he, I, I I've seen it many times where either people don't buy or just forget their Nomex socks at the uh, racetrack. I mean, if, if he had done that mistake, which I think would be hard for him to do that. I mean, yeah, hard for the, the top motorsport. <laughs> I mean, he probably just, there's, he's probably got someone babysitting him to put his stuff on or they just give it to him. Right. Like not, he wouldn't have an option to basically, but for the, the, for the rest of us that, yeah. you know, are kind of have for every, the cheapo lemons guy sitting at home. Yeah. You know, if you didn't have your socks on and yeah, you, your kind of shoe got a little caught as you're jumping out and it's, you're in a hurry or in distress you're jumping out and yeah it gets caught you you just slip out of there that's fine but nope now you have your foot's on fire because you have a cotton yep. you know. or even worse you know it might melt right? yeah it could melt to your foot and make burns on it all on its own so it's if you have nylon or something it's definitely something to to think about uh which I'm surprised that shoe came off. I know their F1 cars are tight, but like, did he, did he not tie his shoes right? Did... It, it is. It was a little surprising for yeah. sure. So yeah. that's, uh, uh, he, maybe she gets those, those, those fancy OMP ratchety ones like I have. I'm pretty sure he has the fancy shoes. I don't, he did, I think he had to lace them like some kind of, like a plug. <laughs> There's no way Grosjean laces his racing shoes like a pleb. <laughs> I, I think he's got to have the, he's the only one that does it. So if, maybe uh, if you're not sponsored by him or whatever, yeah. you, you're not allowed to wear the fancy ratchety ones. Although I don't know the ratchety. I, I love it. It's awesome. Yeah. Uh, but it, it's more for, for it's helpful for when you're always taking your shoes on and off like you are in a, 
and endurance racing when you're doing pit stops you need to get your gear on and off and then also with right. uh with the sprint racing like in spec miata there's a lot of downtime between things and i don't want to have to be wearing my gear the whole time so it's nice to just jettison my shoes immediately yeah yeah for anybody not super familiar with the way uh you know i uh, I don't really want to call it amateur racing, but it is. Um, but the way these these series work with Spec Miata is that you'll have multiple races a day. It's not like one race a weekend. So when he says he's a lot of downtime, well, that's, that's in between races. So you're yeah. taking your stuff off. You're putting it back on. You know, it, it sort of goes back to that comfortability thing you mentioned before. Of course. That's that's really what a, a lot of the money's buying you is, yeah. is comfort and ease of use, mm -hmm. I guess. And uh, one thing I've also noticed is uh, it can last longer, too, the more expensive stuff, as you would hope. Yeah. If you're spending that much on <laughs> on gear, you want maybe to replace it less. Because um, I, I remember one thing, I think it was at a Lemons event, and so I have a Stilo helmet, which I really like. It's it's very comfortable. It fits my head well. I think that's one important thing with a helmet is not all of them are going to fit the similar depending yeah, on your head like shape different mediums and yeah i know what you mean yeah so the steel just really fits my head nicely um and i like all the extra features like the built-in comms but uh someone was walking by and they were saying oh, i think i'm going to replace my helmet you know it's the new 2020s are coming out and mine's a 2015 and i was just kind of surprised to hear that because i i have a uh, i also have a 2015 helmet and the 2020s are coming out and i look at my helmet it looks i mean other than having all my sweat in there and stuff it basically it looks brand new so and his looked like it was like falling apart so i mean it's still again more expensive gear but um but maybe his kind of cheaper helmet he's gonna have to replace it every five years instead of the the maximum 10 that you can have for a helmet with the snell rating but there you go so if you're trying to uh explain away your purchases to a partner in your <laughs> life it's uh it's dollar per use yeah is is about the same exactly so yeah and and uh, i mean the it shouldn't be any safer as far as a helmet i would hope i mean again that's going to be another weight thing it's going to be more comfortable and added features like the built-in comms are going to be nice and mm -hmm. but but yeah so it, more expensive gear there's just yeah it's going to be it, it, it can also last longer too and it depends I, I i've had some alpine stars not to i guess uh put down a whole company here but like <laughs> all of the, all the gear i've gotten from them just i don't know it just didn't last as long as i hoped it would whereas for some reason i've had good luck with the omp stuff yeah yeah i, I mean so my my car racing gear is all omp um minus the shoes i cheaped out on shoes um so, uh, you know, almost sound like a hypocrite here. Same rating, right? Same safety factor. Um, I just figured I'd see how much I did it before I, I splurged on shoes. Cause some of those shoes get pretty, pretty expensive. Yeah. Um, but yeah, OMP is great. You know, honestly, the, the comfort I have from my OMP and it, it's the nice version of all their stuff, mm -hmm. but it's, it's comfortable it's not even like classified as less of a burden you know i put that omp balaclava on and yeah. it's like a pillow hugging my face like i <laughs> i actually like putting that balaclava on um you know whereas you get a cheap one it's a little thicker it's scratchy and itchy it's mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know hey yeah for for things like that just take my money yeah you know, it feels so much better um, yeah and, just and, as, a, as a side note just so no one gets uh angry over at al's pine tars <laughs> all my motorcycle riding gear is theirs and it's been fantastic yeah. i've uh i've ran out of talent a few times and it's held up great i've been fine <laughs> so uh, at least in their motorcycle <laughs> gear <laughs> shout out to alpine stars yeah yeah and and I mean, yeah, a lot of companies will have kind of their niches, their the things they might do best, better than others. So, uh, and yeah, and at the risk of this becoming an OMP ad, I also, <laughs> I also liked my Sparco suit too. It's just, yeah, you know, I just wanted something a little lighter, a little nicer. Uh, I wanted to treat myself, you know. It's everyone likes to do that every once in a while. Um, but, 
but yeah, I, but uh, but yeah, bringing it back to Formula One again. Uh, so his, I mean, is he had some burn some burns on his hands as well as uh, his, one of his feet. I imagine it was the one that the shoe came off. Yep. Um, but I mean, he was like I said, he was in there. I think they said eighteen seconds. So it's it's that's a long time to be in a very very strong fire. I mean, that was all of the fuel. It was the very first lap of the race, so the entire yeah, fuel, load fuel, fuel load from the entire race was was in that fire. So like, though I was uh, I was reading an article from. Uh, one of the F1 engineers, I don't remember whose team he was on, but uh, his description said it seemed like everything that burned in the fire was from the fuel line. Hmm. Um, and the fuel cell did not puncture because it would have been, well, I mean, just sort of as you said, it was a fuel, full fuel load. Yeah. Um, and the, the fireball supposedly, according to him, uh, would have been much larger if that's where it had come from mm. so he was thinking that you know that was just all in the line from the fuel cell to you mm. know the, mm. the engine because yeah. the the engine the, the whole car split in half and the yep. engine was no longer uh attached to the survival cell so yeah there had to have been there there's going to be a connection of course from the engine to the fuel uh fuel cell so so that would make sense that mm -hmm. maybe the bladder didn't fail. It was more the the line going to it. And however, there I don't know exactly how their fuel pump is set up in a Formula One car. I don't know if it's a lift pump inside, yeah. but if it was, that that thing was just going to be feeding that fire pretty consistently. And even if it wasn't, it was still plenty of fuel to get that get that going. Right. And, I mean, at the end of the day, um, you know, it's going to be to get an amount of power however you do it you know however your engine configuration is you know uh a certain amount of power requires a certain amount of oxygen which then dictates a certain amount of fuel right mm -hmm. so let's not pretend these aren't high horsepower cars and that fuel line was probably pretty thick oh yeah because you know even though it's a you know a twin turbo v6 or Turbo V6. Yeah, single turbo. Single turbo, because it's in the block. Um, turbo V6. <laughs> um, you know, and they, they went to that from the V8, but it doesn't really matter. Um, you know, the, the efficiency might change, but to get a certain amount of power, you need a certain amount of fuel. Yeah. So. Yeah, so. Uh, but yeah, so. Pretty big fire. Uh, I mean, and they were on the scene immediately, because the... In Formula One, the the kind of the safety car will basically back up the field and it'll basically basically follow them through the first couple corners. So he was basically right there as soon as it started, and and yeah, the the the, the safety marshal jumped out and was helping Grosjean. But I mean, he, he actually himself had a uh, a closed or sorry, an open face helmet. Uh, so he didn't. I'm sure he didn't want to get too close to it because I'm I'm sure that felt quite hot yeah on his face so sure. he wasn't able to like kind of jump in there to help him but uh thank uh luckily Grosjean was able to get out of this climb out of the car under his own power and mm -hmm. and uh get over that guardrail so he could he could then catch him kind of and help him into the safety vehicle but uh one thing I'm, I'm not 100 percent sure if that's what caused some of his hand burns but it might have been when he had to climb over that uh guardrail he had to touch what would have been a very very hot metal guardrail that was engulfed in flames yeah so it, it could have very well been that kind of having to grab on tightly to that that guardrail uh that was now very very hot could have caused that kind of that glove to fail so it might not even been any problem with you know the the safety standard or anything like that it's just more of this crazy circumstance where he gets shoved through a guardrail and has to climb back over it yeah. to get to safety um and of course, you know, you're not going to think about, oh, how hot is this guardrail as I'm in this fire trying to climb out targeting. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it was, a uh, it was pretty hard to watch for sure. I, I know some of the comments, I think Daniel Ricardo had some comments like, why, why do they keep showing it and stuff? I mean, they did confirm, I mean, he, he got out of the car and he was there. He was, he was okay. He was conscious and everything. So like, you know, mm -hmm. no one was 
was seriously harmed. So that's yeah, you because know, they did pan away from it after it happened, right? And then show replay until kind of they showed Grosjean safe first. So yeah, which is good. You know, I mean, I think it's because of the outcome. Yeah. It's easy to sit here and play armchair quarterback. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, um, you know, if, if it had turned out a different way. You know, I mean, certainly there'd be questions about the safety standard and the, the how the incident occurred. But, I mean, we we wouldn't be having this conversation, I think, for for different reasons. Yeah, of course. Know. Yeah, and, you know, and at the end of the day, Formula One's a big show. So, and I mean, as much as we want to say we don't we want to see crash crashes like that, I mean, they're probably the same people that watch crash montages on YouTube and all that kind of stuff. So Probably. You know, I, I don't want to speak for everyone, but I, I know I've I've watched quite a few of those. Yeah, I know uh, my girlfriend doesn't like watching those because she thinks I'm going to become one of those montages one day. But you're too good, though, right? <laughs> you got a first place spec me out of season regional. Yeah, <laughs> regional spec me out of. Yeah, and no, nothing nothing too fancy there. But uh. But yeah, I, mean, I I understand from her perspective there. I mean, she she watches me go out there and doesn't want to think of that, about that. I'm not thinking about it, but yeah, she is. So I right. I mean, it's probably easier from the driver's seat, honestly. Right? Yeah, you've you, got too much to do. You just kind of you know. forget about all that. Yeah, exactly. If you're, I mean, if you're thinking about that, then you're either going too slow or <laughs> yeah. Or you just, I don't know, you, you need to focus more on the track or yeah, something. Yeah, exactly. You're going too slow if you're thinking about that. <laughs> There's more in the reserve for you to drive faster. Yeah, but so. But yeah, so, I mean, it was definitely a scary moment. No one no one wants to see that. Uh, we're really glad that he, he got out of there okay. And although he's, I mean, he's done for the season, it looks like, and potentially... I don't think he, he doesn't have a seat next year. He got he got the boot as of I think uh, this week. So he got he's gotten replaced. So I mean, I'm not sure if he's going to be a reserve or anything like that. But he might find his way into or maybe I know he has uh, I believe he has a family, he has some kids. So maybe he'll yeah. just decide that's that's where he wants to focus his attention. I'm sure he he's made. Yeah. Well, I mean, you can always uh, especially with a record like his or honestly any record in f1 um you can go down to sports cars pretty easily you exactly know? yeah um and it's moderately unrelated but that's similar to what jan magnuson did right um mm -hmm. left corvette racing uh for the most part and then he's racing i believe tc cars in denmark <laughs> so yeah and still he racing but closer to home Oh, and, and he even, he was actually, I think he did a, I don't know if he ever did a Formula One race, but I know he was a Formula One prospect. He was. Yeah. Uh, and then that didn't work out, so he went to GT car. So he, he did it twice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, once you get that resume built up, there's plenty of people, especially in sports car racing, that has gentleman classes. So there you go. Our pro tip for your racing resume yeah. is... Race in F one, and then you can go where you want from there. Exactly. You could, even, <laughs> you could race. You could race lemons. And people, Pro tip: People might pay you. Might pay you to race in lemons. But yeah. if, if anything, they'll give you free beer or something. Yeah, that's lemons. But uh, uh, but yeah. So, um, I guess keeping it with F one news, we also are getting this week. We heard that Lewis Hamilton. Tested positive for the Rona. For the Rona. Sure. Yeah, that's that sucks for him. Um, yeah, and as yeah. Of, so he, so he's he's out of the next race um, at least. At least, yeah. You know, it's it's gonna be pending on um, you know flights and how quickly he can test negative consecutively. Right. Yeah. I believe it's three negative tests in a row that you need. Um, and then you need to test negative mm -hmm. days before the flight. So he might be out for more than just one race. We'll, we'll see. Um, but it is interesting, um, how the, the pandemic, uh, changed racing this year. For sure. You know? Um, I guess I'll, I'll start with, uh, with IMSA just cause I'm, I'm a little more familiar with it, you know, but 
uh, initially, you know, and th this actually isn't just IMSA, but series were, were pushing the, the races back, um, and then sometimes they felt like they had to cancel them, um, depending on where it was or how many times they had pushed a race back. And then at the end of the year, it seemed like, you know, or at least at the end of the summer, uh, when things kind of started to open up a little bit more, it seemed like there was a mad rush to get, to get the races in, you know? Um, but, but it's interesting how it affected, uh, motorsports as a whole. So it was a delayed a few, um, and then I believe they canceled a couple races and then I believe, uh, they have the number of races they do mm -hmm. because they guarantee a certain amount of races for everybody participating mm -hmm. um you know you you want to see corvette racing versus rll or the bmws and you know uh the porsches and the manufacturers you don't want to see them just at one track you want to see them yeah uh multiple places and you know some of the gentleman drivers in those lower series um or you know gtd anyway mm -hmm. uh you know put in some amount of money to race and so they should they should go what they're paying for so uh they they kept a minimum number of races but then they scheduled the tracks based off of what had some availability of course um you know as lots of people in the u.s might know this changed uh the approach to to corona changed state by state um so some of the states that were more strict um like they just like didn't New York, visit. yeah, like exactly. Watkins Glen, Watkins Glen never happened. Um, yeah, I don't think they held a single event all year. Yeah. So that I mean, you know, I mean, it sucks for them. And Watkins Glen is a good track. Um, and there, there were a few other races that were canceled, and then uh, IMSA made it up by repeating races <laughs> at tracks uh, where they could go, where the states were more open. Um, you know, so they raced at Road Atlanta a couple of times. They raced at Sebring a couple of times. Um, so it's just, mm -hmm. I guess, interesting how they navigated it. Yeah, because uh, IMSA is owned by NASCAR, right? Yes. Yeah, so a lot of the tracks they went to were also owned by NASCAR. Is that yes. right? Yep. Yeah, that's right. So they're sort of able to call their own shots, you know. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we if you if you back up a little bit and look at a big picture you have to rent the track right mm -hmm. you know maybe depending on the series depending on the track maybe the track pays the series you know because they get ticket sales or you know there's there's various ways this works um you know especially with big name tracks or smaller tracks you know it's just the agreement cha changes but yeah um you know the tracks they own are are low risk and if they need to cancel, they don't lose money. Um, you know, if they would have otherwise paid to rent it or paid to have people there. So Yeah. My yeah, my understanding with Watkins Glen, since they're they're not part of NASCAR and everything, ultimately if they're if they're gonna hold a race but have no fans, they're gonna lose a ton of money because they're they're yeah. usually I believe they're if they're not paying they, they may be paying basically for the the the, the opportunity to have IMSA come and and, yep. and then have all those fans there so it's almost in that case they're almost encouraging the the local politicians to <laughs> prevent races from happening because that way they don't have to uh get out of their contract it, basically it forces them out of the contract there's there's always going to be some sort of way that if there's a kind of outside intervention that's out of their control that's it's neither their fault so they'll be able to kind of get out of that yeah that deal so in in that case and you know, and I saw that too with a lot of the the club racing stuff too, with a lot of events being canceled. Is it was kind of, uh, at least for the pro stuff, it was going to be a huge loss for them uh, if they were if they had if they were able to do the race. So there was really no reason if the if the state wasn't going to let them have fans that they were, they they kind of didn't want to have the event, so they would basically wouldn't lose all that money for almost putting on a, a race for for free, basically for IMSA. Yeah with no benefit to them. So, I mean, I, I understand that, like, you know, they got to make money. We, we want all these tracks to stay in business for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, but, but yeah, because of it, it was just, a you know, awkward, 
awkward situation for a lot of people, a lot of race series, a lot of fans of racing. Yeah. But, you know, it, it's interesting. Uh, you hear a lot of news about uh, tracks having a hard time staying in business. Mm -hmm. There's there's a promising new place on the horizon, isn't there? Yes, it? yes, there is, there is. Uh, it's the, the Midwest is is a buzz with... with <laughs> with the news of a, a new track opening up because it doesn't it doesn't happen often i mean no. at least in the u.s it's mostly i mean coda was probably the most recent one i know of that was i mean it's a big big name track of course but right. yeah other than that like most tracks kind of have just been around forever maybe they'll close maybe they'll reopen someone like vir in one case they they closed down for a while and and then was reopened and now it's a beautiful facility because they put a lot of money into it but well, i love that track uh, for really sure but uh, the, but yeah, it's the the new track. It's going to be in the Ozarks. Uh, I can't remember. Is it Montana, Minnesota, Missouri, Missouri? <laughs> I, I get all those M ones mixed up. Yeah. But uh, yeah, out in Missouri, out in, I assume the middle of nowhere. It looks like the middle of nowhere from yeah. looking at it. But yeah, there's a new track going in the the Ozark. Ozark Motorsports Park, I believe, I think is the. Is oh, the I don't name. know the official title. Or Raceway Park, because there's there's a Ozarks drag racing track or whatever. If you if you search it, you might get that one. But there's also, the the motorsports facility that's going in. So it, I think it's a, it's a just under just barely under four mile track at least for the full configuration. They have a bunch of different configurations. Right. Uh, but it's yeah, it's in like uh, it's in the Ozarks. It's looks like a lot of elevation change. Could oh be, yeah could be pretty interesting i'm sure all the at least hopefully all the club racing stuff will find their way there soon and at least when it's finished i think it's planned to be done um sometime in 2021 i'm not sure if it's going to be open for kind of the, the main season but uh i believe they laid down their first layer of uh, asphalt so that's yep i saw a video of uh i think it was pf racing's uh GT three fifty question mark uh running around the track okay um, so yeah I mean they're not done they have more more layers of asphalt to go but yeah, in the the pit area pit lane that kind of stuff Pat I think that I think I saw from a overhead shot to the garage is going it looks like nice big garage space I don't know how their pit lane hopefully they don't run into the mistake of doing like kind of a lackluster pit lane so that no one doing actual like will to will stuff can effectively operate there. I, I imagine. Well, on on one of their posts, they said they wanted to see professional racing there. At some okay, point. yeah. So, so hey. I assume they're gonna size everything accordingly so IMSA could show up if they wanted. Of course, yeah. And I, I mean, you know, Facebook comments they're they're probably all hundred percent true. But, oh, absolutely. Uh, but I one person, them. one person was saying Formula One could even come there, but I. I highly, I highly doubt that. I mean, just from a track standpoint, maybe one day. But uh, as far as getting that certification, that FIA certification to be, you need certification. You pay F one or Formula One, you, of course. You pay them a lot of money to show up. <laughs> yes, like and a lot. That that's almost run Coda. Yep, out of business multiple of times. Uh, so it, it would be cool, but it's I, I sort of question it. Yeah, yeah, but. I mean, I would all love to see it. Um, yeah. And like you guys might think, oh, well, what about like Monaco? That that can't have any sort of safety rating. Well, it's like, I think it's grandfathered in. Yeah. I mean, yeah. back in the day, F1 cars used to race at the Glen. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's there's actually quite a few places in the U.S. that F1 cars used to race. Yes. Um, Indy, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Indy. Yeah. Uh, they had the whole tire, uh, Michelin tire scandal there. So it's yeah there's been several u.s grand prix in the past uh it kind of went away for a while until coda came back but yeah but yeah it, it's it's you know i'm sure it's more of a the rules change with the times rules change so. the money changes that kind of stuff yeah. politics all that kind of thing with racing it's it's all there but uh but yeah going back to the, the ozarks it i mean looking at it, it looks pretty cool uh, there's looks like someone took a heat gun to uh road america yeah yeah it's just good. let it melt a little bit <laughs> yeah it's a not only it does yeah a couple extra quarters in there and then also uh uh maybe melt some of that elevation change in there which road america has a lot of they just don't really have it 
kind of where you notice it. It's a lot of on the straights elevation change, which yeah. is just, which is fine. I mean, it makes your Miata feel that much slower going up on it's into the to the start finish line there. But and they're not slow cars by any means. <laughs> certainly, <laughs> yeah, you, you, you tell yourself that. <laughs> I I can confirm they're very slow. Okay. Uh, although sometimes for faster than Corvettes, depending on how they're being driven, but you know, I'm sure everyone's seen seen those YouTube videos or yeah. whatever. Um, it's all driver mod, generally. Driver mod, of course. We're we're a big proponent of the driver mod here in yeah, the absolutely. Motorsports Tech Talk podcast. So, yeah, if you want to get better, uh, drive more. Yeah, it's get it's some a, seat time. And you Practice. know, what, I, you know, no one thing I find I don't know if it's the same for everyone, but I enjoy getting seat time. It's fun. Yeah, me too. Yeah, it's it's good. It's good stuff. It's kind of it's it's fun, and you get better. It's yeah, it's a it's a win win. It's a win win. It's it's very good. I I enjoy that. But uh, I definitely would like to get some seat time at this this Ozark track though. Oh yeah, I would love it's it. Done. It look it looks sweet. I mean, from overhead shots and everything, it's hard to say. But I mean, you throw an elevation change, you throw in enough corners, some of them will be interesting. I imagine. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it does look really fun from all the pictures I've seen. Yeah. So, so it hopefully they it, it comes together well and it can open up and they do well and I know there's a lot of people checking out. There's a lot of hype. Um, uh, but yeah, so looking forward to that. Kind of going back to to driver mod mm. uh, and kind of the start of this topic a little bit uh, with with Hamilton getting COVID. Kind of hot off the presses, we've we heard uh, as of recording this that. George Russell hey. will be taking Hamilton's seat. So uh, this weekend we'll get to see, you know, if if it is all driver mod in that Mercedes or if that thing just drives itself, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I I have a theory, um, generally, that at least at that level of motorsports. So I'm as as Brian mentioned, we're we're big proponents of the driver mod. Um, Probably anybody listening to this, if you want to get better, uh, don't buy stuff for your car. Just get more seat time. It's going to help you. Uh, but I do have a theory that at least at the, the pinnacle of motorsport, that tippy top, um, the drivers are all very good. They're very talented individuals. But I think they're so talented that they're pretty close to each other. Um, an F1 in my mind, uh, is generally an engineering competition. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously racing is a lot, right? Everything has to come together. Yeah. Uh, sometimes it's luck, driver skill, making good decisions, good pit stops, the whole crew. Um, I mean, it really is a team effort. So, you know, I, it's hard to say, oh, it's just engineering. But I think uh, overall, that's, that's sort of what we see when we see these cars racing is... Mm -hmm. You know, if you stuck, um, you know, a good driver, which is any F1 driver, mm -hmm. in a faster car, will they will they keep up with someone in the same car? Yeah, yeah. So, I'm, I know I'm excited for this weekend's race because everyone everyone likes to see everyone's a, kind of everyone speculates like, oh, what if I took the guy from the slowest car and put it in the fastest car? Would they win? And we get to finally see that. Like, <laughs> yeah, it, we're gonna exactly. find out. So it, it, it'll be interesting. Um, it'll definitely be a lot of pressure on Botas to perform when he has got a, a newbie get jumping in there. Uh, he doesn't want to get shown up there. He's, I mean, yeah. I mean he's, he's got by far the strongest car. He should just run away with the race, hopefully, But as far as he's concerned. But that'll be really interesting. It might give Verstappen uh, a little ability just because he's usually ahead of Botas, it seems like, most of the time. So if he can get up there and run away, he can maybe get a get another win this season but but yeah it's yeah it'll, it'll be a fun shakeup to watch for sure yeah i'm uh, yeah, i'm sure everyone's upset that stoffel van dorn isn't going to go out there because everyone knows him and is rooting for him and everything yeah. but <laughs> joking aside uh i think russell was an interesting choice and uh yeah it'd be really cool to see looking forward to it for sure yeah but but yeah, from uh, uh, from there, you want to get into some more racing news? More racing news? Yeah, I mean, so recently we've heard that uh, Audi and then following them up, BMW will be leaving Formula E. 
Uh, I'm not entirely sure what BMW's plans for the future are. Hmm. Uh, Audi says they're leaving to participate in the Dakar rally, okay. which I think sounds awesome. Oh, yeah. And then our, a return to Le Mans. Yeah, I think that's what, I, at least I, I'm excited for. Um, yeah. Because I've run, if, if you don't watch too much Le Mans, uh, Audi... Porsche has the most overall wins at Le Mans, but Audi had basically the whole from like 2000, I think maybe 99 onward, basically won all, all but like one or two races. And mm -hmm. they had kind of racked up the most wins in, in a compressed period of time. And uh, we're on their way to try to beat Porsche's, uh, Porsche's record. But, uh, but they bowed out in, I think it was 2017, 2018, somewhere around there. Same time as dieselgate if you remember that yes That's so uh sort of what spurred it is you know it's definitely getting harder to justify it. and they also had two volkswagen group teams racing against each other basically so right as yeah with, i mean porsche and audi are both part of the same parent group yep so so as as with a lot of things the if the money dries up mm -hmm. you can't you can't race anymore because we all know it's very expensive even yeah. if, especially at that level um so so yeah, they bowed out, left uh, just Toyota and Porsche to fight it out, and then a year later after that, just uh, Toyota to get some some free wins, basically. Yeah. Uh, but I guess they're they're annoyed that Toyota keeps getting all those free wins, <laughs> so they're gonna go back and get their wins. They're gonna jump in there and uh, give them a little run for their money now. You know, Toyota's been doing it nonstop. They they still got all their structures and teams and drivers in place, so you know yeah, now. Interesting. Now it's kind of the shoes on the other foot because when Toyota first came in, Audi was kind of hitting their stride. So now yeah. I feel like Toyota's kind of in their stride as far as Lamas is concerned. And so, yeah, it'd be interesting because we got the hypercar uh, regulations coming in. Yeah. Uh, Toyota already showed theirs off a few times. I believe they, at, the, at this year's Le Mans, they drove uh, their prototype around with the trophy. And so they're, they're getting ready. They're, they're ready. So if, yeah. if Audi's going to do something there, they got to, start doing it sooner than later if I'm, but so who do you think is going to be uh running the audi team um yeah i'd be interested heard. if if yoast will yeah because well. yoast isn't with uh mazda anymore so for yeah. any casual race fans team yoast is who ran their car before mm -hmm. um and then when mm -hmm. audi left um i don't know what they did for a short period of time but after that Essentially, they came to run the Mazda DPI cars yes. uh, here in the U.S. with IMSA. Uh, and they're done with that now. So, yeah, um, yeah and I don't know whose decision that was or how that happened, but they're not there. Yeah, maybe maybe Audi was whisper, whispering in their ear a little yeah, bit, like, uh, uh, come back, well, come back to us. Yeah, we've got so. another, you know, crazy car for you. Yeah, so... So yeah, that'll be interesting. Yeah, we'll, we haven't seen anything on that, but uh, we'll we'll keep our ears to the ears to the ground. Mm -hmm. See if we can uh, let's see what will what happens there. But uh, but yeah, that's I mean, kind of brings up a, a interesting point with the we talk about these you know Pratt and Miller, Team Yoast, all that kind of stuff. Like I, I guess a lot of people may not realize that even though Porsche or Cadillac is is over, all over the the, the side of the car and all that stuff. A lot of the times these companies don't usually more basically contract yeah. a company like Manti Racing. I mean, they're, they're pretty, they're now like on campus or whatever at the Porsche yep. headquarters. Um, Porsche owns 51% <laughs> of Manti Racing. Yeah. So, so it, it depends. Like so there's some programs that are just a hundred percent. Like they just, Hey, you go do this. Here's the money. Mm -hmm. and put our name on it uh and then you have manti racing which is a little more like now they're doing and and that's with a lot of automakers i think they're now they're coming out with manti racing editions of of their sports cars and stuff like that toyota right. i mean the, the new supra is the uh the gr supra the gazoo racing supra so yeah and i i mean we can get to that in a minute but uh i really like that gt4 car yes yeah so it's yeah, it's always good to see a new a new car showing up in a in a series. Um, I, maybe maybe that will be a, a one for a another day. Yeah, uh, sure. Uh, maybe for next episode. I think we 
uh, I think at this point, uh, I think in this podcast, we'd like to kind of go back down to the, the little guy, the, the amateur racing series. Cause, uh, there's not too many people covering them. I mean, it's not on TV or anything like that. Yeah, but. certainly. What, what kind of losers would sit in a room and cover amateur <laughs> endurance racing? Yeah, so, uh, yeah. I, I don't know who, but uh, I, I don't, I don't want to meet him. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, so I'm thinking uh, one of the things we'd like to do is, is also covering some of this. Since we're, we're involved in it and we also follow it. And, yeah, I think it... Honestly, it's it's it could be just as good as, as pro racing. There's just a, lot, a little slower, a little less money involved, a little a little less sponsors and fancy. Well, our definitions stuff. of little must be different, but yeah, <laughs> you know, it's it's the same thing. But some, but some people might say it's the purest form of racing. I mean, well, we call those people wrong. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's um, you know coming up in this this. F1 weekend that we were just talking about. We're mm -hmm. going to have uh, Trump Car. I recognize they've changed their name to Champ Car. I knew them <laughs> as Trump Car, and I'm sticking to it. Uh, they're going to VIR North, yes. um, which is where we had our second race yeah, together. Second race together. We yeah. uh, First one was that Lemons, aforementioned Lemons race we talked about at the beginning there. Yeah. Um, and we raced against each other in a a different race before that yes yes um but yeah that, that was our second but, race but on driving the same together team. yep yeah we uh were racing our old trusty volvo <laughs> old trusty volvo 960 uh that uh one of the guys i work with builds and uh yeah he it's a pretty sweet car I mean, we can talk about that that one another day it's yeah it's, it, it's a fun it, one you know to me it sounds like we're getting ready to have like a <laughs> follow up podcast just talking about specific you know the volvo yeah. the gazoo racing supra yeah. gt4 yeah yeah might just have a have a quick little podcast talking about cars yeah yeah no you uh stay tuned people if you yeah. if you want to hear more this is more common yep. just giving you a little a little look into the future there but uh yeah. but anyways yeah i mean so that's uh the the vr north race will be will be interesting yeah. um there's uh the the favorites are usually the good old Huggins racing team with their BMWs. They they live close by. They've won the 24 I think two years in a row or at least two total years. Mm -hmm. Uh and they they usually put up a good showing there with usually two cars. Um I believe I saw on the entry list the kind of new up and comers MK Motorsports and their Ford Mustang. They've been they won Sebring. Uh they got second I think at Pitt. So and really, folks, that's just because Ford makes an outstanding machine. <laughs> Man, this guy, he's so unbiased over here. He's <laughs> totally so, unbiased. So unbiased. Yeah. So much opinionate, opinionation going on here. Yeah, it's, not going on. Listen, if you want to go fast, go get a Mustang. Yeah. It's, if it's a Fox body or it's a new GT500. Yeah, they're... Then whatever. And just, that's, yeah, that's why in, in Champ Car, all you see is Mustangs. Just Mustangs. Yeah, no not Miatas. Miatas. No Miatas. No BMW no. 30s. It's all Mustangs. It's, I mean, cause I, I know if I want to take car racing, I, I really like spending a lot on consumables. Um, I like really heavy cars. Yeah. Um, well, I so. like winning and <laughs> that, uh, the team you just mentioned does our seem to have a good track record. So yeah, they, far. So they got we'll, some, we'll see how they do. It's kind of exciting. Yeah. They got some momentum on their sides. Uh, and then, you know, there, there's, there's a lot of new teams building new cars that, uh, maybe we could see, see in there, but but yeah, so that that's this week, that's this coming weekend here, and I think believe there's also a WRL race in uh, at Coda. Yeah. Uh, that's that's a track that uh, I got to experience this year. It mm -hmm. was for the first time. It was pretty sweet. I would you uh, would you drive it on a Miata? Oh, okay. It was it had the wrong engine in it though. That's the problem. Oh, is that it? Yeah, it has some GM engine in it. It's oh. it's it's a but. It's, but you seem to really enjoy the Miata platform if you're using it for both uh -huh. spec racing and endurance racing. Yeah, you know, some, you could say that. Yeah. Someone could say that. I wouldn't say it, <laughs> but you can say it. I mean, you already well, I'm said I'm definitely it. saying it. So, 
that's that's you can say that all you want. I mean, you keep driving them, so yeah, well, it seems like you like it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, sometimes sometimes you can't afford to do any better. So, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah. So WRL going there. I, I I have yet to race in WRL. I've always had some interest in it. They're kind of they're a lot. Of, there's some teams that cross over from Champ Car to WRL, AAR, all the kind of i guess the big three i mean there's there's lucky dog as well of course but west coast we don't kind of see that around here um and then of course the grid life you can't forget about not, not endurance racing but uh, as far as racing it's yeah well they i mean they started that wheel to wheel racing series this year yeah and that's taken a lot of competitors uh have started showing up there they, not taking them away from WRLAR and champ car as far as i can tell um more maybe from NASA and SCCA, I, I, I've seen, but uh, but again, that's a that could be a conversation for another day. Uh, yeah. But yeah, can't forget lemons too. I, the I guess the big four. I, yeah, I mean lemons. Uh, as, as many jokes as we might make, uh, is sort of the one that started all of this. Yeah, yeah. Back in two thousand nine, it yeah they kind of. If it wasn't for them, maybe we wouldn't be talking about all these other series. So yeah, credit all where these, credit is due. All these other series break off. Or did break off from lemons? And yeah, yeah. So start their own. So, so I mean, hey, I've always, I always have a a place in my heart for lemons for sure. Yeah. As much as I like to make fun of it, but, um, but yeah. So, but other than that, I think that covers. Uh, I think that covers most of. I, yeah, I mean, sure well, if, but before we move on, why? I mean, you said you were on the track, and I had to point out it was on a Miata. But well, what do you think of Coda? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I. I really enjoyed it. it. It's way more techn technical than I was expecting, especially with a much slower car than a Formula One car. Mm -hmm. um, I was finding that I was thinking we bring this little Miata to this giant Formula One track. It's just going to be wide open throttle all day long. Um, but it's not like kind of because F1 cars have so much more grip than than our champ cars do. Uh, it basically all just like scales. They they're kind of they're kind of they're watt and kind of same place as we are and it makes it for a lot of tricky areas there's a lot of low speed kind of technical corners uh the the s's kind of the s's at the at the beginning of the lap lap or turn kind of i think it's turn two through many yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of turns uh that area is really nice and, and it's got as long straights for for flexing that that miata muscle on oh, yeah. uh but yeah, it's it's a it's a pretty sweet track. I'd love to go back there again for sure. A uh, little little bit of a drive from from here, but but uh, for a ride and drive, it's it's great. I, mean, I I really enjoyed it. I just wish the car I was driving was better, but you know, it just it just had some mechanical issues. But it's gonna happen. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, so yeah, I really enjoyed it there, and I'm sure everyone at WRL is gonna love it. It's, it's, it's also good to always see more events there because it seems like every year Coda has a, a bankruptcy scare. It seems like, yeah, especially uh, this year. You know, there's a lot of things going down that that would affect that. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's good to see more events there. But uh, but yeah, so that kind of covers. I mean, we might have missed some events going on. I'm not sure what Lemon schedule is looking like. No, but uh, or AERs, honestly. Yeah, I don't, I don't think they have one this weekend. No. Uh, I don't. I mean, I don't think they do, but I haven't checked their schedule in a minute. Yeah, but we'll we'll be sure to be <laughs> we'll be sure to be on top of that when uh, in further episodes, of course. I, yeah, when things pick back up, right? I mean, we're coming really to the close of the season. Yeah, so I mean, it's basically towards the end. So, yeah, we'd like to to cover all of them. I mean, Champ Car is kind of where I find most of my uh time but all this stuff tends to be overlapping so i like to, to check out the other stuff too so right so yeah we'll uh we'll definitely keep keep an eye on that uh, it's, i think it's yeah it's not something m many people will, will talk about on the on the interwebs other than the, the forums and the facebook pages yeah. that we're all probably members of uh but but yeah so it's definitely something we like to follow the because as as you know, it, it's not professional racing, but there's still there's still some good racing going on there. It's there's always good there battles, really is. good. You know, I mean, you get close cars and close drivers, and it's it's fun to watch. It doesn't 
need to be at you know 200 kilometers an hour it can be at, yeah it um, can be 110 yeah it can be yeah i mean yeah most most miatas can hardly break 100 miles an hour so it's uh there's got to be racing at every speed i mean it's you still feel a, a lot of g-force you still have to make some daring passes it just might might be a little you have a little more time to think about it but right. but uh yeah it's we really enjoy the club racing and and for most of us it's it's kind of all we can do not not many of us can have successful cutting careers that lead to successful open wheel careers that lead to successful formula one careers it's kind of kind of only like 20 people right now that can do them can say that so, yeah. <laughs> in the entire world so honestly probably more people are racing in club racing than in pro racing in, in any day so right might as well focus that uh i'm trying to spotlight a little bit more there too it's i mean it's it's what i enjoy in my spare time so yeah absolutely so but i mean if that's about all the uh amateur racing mm -hmm. you know that's that's in the way um i guess you know we're into december which means that we're coming up on the roar yep yeah um, or realistically we would have been coming up on the roar um in past years mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um so for a bunch of you race fans uh you probably know this, but the roar was generally right after New Year's, um, like the January 2nd, January 3rd. And then the Daytona race was actually um, at the end of January. So you had quite a bit of time between uh, the roar, which which is essentially just practice for mm -hmm. Daytona, and then the actual race itself. Um, but this year, IMSA has pushed it back. So we're going to have the roar and then... Daytona the following weekend um, and they're both in the end of January I think Daytona's the last week which means the roars the 20 something because mm -hmm. it'll be the weekend before um, yes yeah, so, so that'll be interesting but it it is I guess it's it's nice for the teams that it's been pushed back you know I know a lot of people who uh who complain because you know they're <laughs> flying out January 1st and yeah. they're you know feel like they're going to die from being too hungover and <laughs> this is never a fun time from a lot of people and so so it's cool that the series did that um mm -hmm. i don't know if it's entirely for the teams or a, a reaction to covid and scheduling but yeah. um it's cool that it worked out either way except y'all are gonna have to uh wait another couple of weeks to see some some racing yeah yeah so yeah usually kind of the roar kind of kicks off the whole pro racing season like everywhere basically yeah yeah it's the first it's kind like of the first all thing of them. and then the, the daytona 24 also like it because it's so early in the season it tends to attract a lot of the big names from other race series that maybe can kind of sneak away from you know alonzo a couple times uh jeff yeah. gordon some other some other people that are actively racing in those other big series will show up maybe have a little fun yeah in daytona get their feet wet for the new season yeah and... yeah yeah so it's it's always interesting to see that i i always enjoy the daytona 24 it's kind of kind of yeah it kicks off the season which yeah there's there's usually not that much i mean this year although because ims season went a lot later than usual it went a lot later uh, i mean they had fewer races overall mm-hmm but because they delayed them for so long. Yeah, I mean, the last race was, I mean, it's December now. <laughs> I need to think back. But, uh, you know, I mean, it was probably a, a month, month and a half ago. Yeah. Um, whereas generally it would have ended months before that. So, yeah, usually it go wrote pretty it, late. Usually Petit Le Mans at Road Atlanta is the last race. And this time it was, it was not the last race. Oh, yeah, they finished at Sebring. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's it it was it's been a funky season, but well, I mean the good news is then we don't have to wait as long for for our racing. I mean Formula One also took a big break in the middle there, or at, at the beginning they didn't even they didn't, they were trying to do their first race in Aust Australia and had to pull the plug when a bunch of people tested positive in one of the teams. I think it was McLaren. I I can't remember. I think it was yeah. Um, but yeah, they basically just delayed their season and then kind of snuck it all in at the end here. That's why there's three races in a row. Yeah. 
uh, coming nice, up though. here. So right. yeah, it's good for us low intention span binge watching types that uh, oh yeah don't want millennials wait. unite yeah so uh, but yeah it, the seasons are yeah it's never it's never gone this late so yeah it'll be nice we don't have to wait between all the different race seasons it's uh it's kind of just formula one season end, and then like a couple weeks later we got the roar and <laughs> and then get right back into it yeah. um yeah and then we'll both be getting ra- ready for some racing ourselves yep uh, next year i got yeah. i got some some top secret engine mods going on in my miata maybe just better be legal kind of hide a turbo in there or something yeah uh gotta give myself a better shot you know i i need all the help i can get but uh but yeah so gearing up to spec miata season maybe some some champ car if i ever finish one of the many cars uh and then i believe you were talking about some motorcycle racing maybe yep yeah so uh just to give everyone some understanding of that last comment, my co-host here has multiple project cars that have never been finished. Yeah, so who, who doesn't? Who doesn't? I finished mine. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, we can, you know, I will, we'll throw those into our uh, car talking about auxiliary podcast that we mentioned, I guess. <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, so, so that's what he's referring to. He will eventually have a uh amateur level race car um and it and i'll i'll leave it there again we can talk about it later but um yeah yeah i'm gonna be doing some motorcycle racing um i'm pretty excited um you know i i did a couple track days which i know sounds like i I hate it when people say that (laughs) i really do uh well at least when it comes to cars but um (laughs) but honestly with uh with racing pro racing um i mean it's a lot of the same weekends right Mm -hmm. good Mm -hmm. weekends in summer is is when i'm working for the race team rather than um doing my own thing you know so this coming year uh having a stable job with ford um Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i'm excited to do my own racing you know and and part of that is you know motorcycle racing so i'm I'm pretty excited i want to do do more days get more seat time and and get going fast there we go there we go and And a a co-acquaintance that you kind of know but not well is dragging elbows and i'm only dragging knees so (laughs) i gotta get to that level of speed yeah yeah it's and i mean bike racing it's it's one way to go really fast yeah it is honestly so a lot of people are timid about it, mm-hmm. but uh, you'll go really fast, and it's relatively inexpensive, especially compared to cars. Yes, yeah, getting a car that'll do 160 or whatever <laughs> you know miles an hour down the uh, back straight of Road Atlanta is it might be a little more expensive than the, the motorcycle you can get for that. Yeah, I'll find you a used leader bike for five grand dog. <laughs> let's get you doing a buck 60 yeah yeah so it's uh yeah that should be that should be pretty fun yeah i'm excited for it um honestly i'm, I'm really excited to to get better because uh so far the last two years that i've done it um because it's been so sparse i i only have a only do a couple days and then i stop the season knowing where i could have gotten better yeah. You know, and it feels like there's never enough time. Um, you know, my, my goals are there and, and I can do them. I just, you know, I don't have the time to reach them and, and, I, and mm-hmm, I will now. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, pretty yeah. excited. And then I'm, you know, I'm going to half acidly race the cart. Um, yep. yep. Not, not competitively. Um, you know, I, I bought it more for downtime if I'm not racing endurance cars with this hooligan sitting across from me or, <laughs> or racing motorcycles. Um, but after talking to some pro drivers, it seems to be the, one of the best ways to increase your, you know, uh, ability. Yeah. And, and it's, yeah, it's another way to go really fast as far as that kind of G feeling and everything. 
without spending too much money. Yeah, I mean, if you're talking lateral Gs, we'll get you doing over two <laughs> in a cart. Yeah. Um, and the acceleration, too, and the power to weight. Yeah. You know, you don't have to just increase power. You know, always take out that weight, and that's basically what carts and bikes are doing there. And Yeah, that's exactly what bikes are doing. And it's working. Yeah. But, yeah. But, yeah, I'm looking to forward to some some good racing next year. Uh, you think you're just going to keep it Spec Miata and uh, amateur endurance racing? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Uh, I'm not too keen on the, the two-wheeled kind of stuff. I Sure. I know yeah. I'm just going to hurt myself. Uh, yeah, we all do. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, just I definitely I want to – my goal this year is – or next year is to – do nasa nationals for spec uh kind of this year was my getting up to speed year i wanted to i bought you know a relatively old car that just needed some some love yeah. got it up to speed got myself up to speed of course because driver mod yep uh and yeah now i'm doing going a little further with the car this winter getting getting kind of fresh engine in there and then uh yeah basically hopefully hit the ground running next season since I, i've been on all the tracks now and have a fresh car, fresh engine, have yeah. it ready to go and see if I can get some momentum going in the nationals and it'll be it'll be at Daytona next year, which is exciting. I, I got to race there too this year, uh and enjoyed it as as much as you can enjoy a roval. Uh right. <laughs> you know, rovals can be a little less, I guess, interesting as far as the uh, track layouts, but but Daytona has a lot of history and it's always cool to be at a big track like that and you know enemy hada i might even hit 110 maybe wow it'll be crazy that'll be with some help of course some bub drafting help i, can, I don't know if i can get there just can't be alone no but uh, but yeah so that that's always to look forward to but i think uh i think that might do it for us uh this episode yeah yeah we're we're um gonna try and keep this close to an hour which obviously we went over <laughs> um i mean it's gonna be fairly organic so it's never gonna be exactly an hour um yeah because ultimately we just we want to have fun with this and we hope maybe some people will listen but yeah you know we uh you know we want it to be when it would be a good time for us as well as good time for you guys so yeah yeah so you know uh yeah, stay we're... tuned i guess you yeah. know hopefully you liked it and if you didn't Maybe we'll have something more your flavor coming up. You know, as we sort of mentioned, we'll be talking about actual cars, um, the build, um, professional cars, as well as our cars, project cars, racing cars. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we're gonna we're gonna try to do it every once a week. Yep, is our goal. So we'll have new episodes out hopefully every week. And yeah, uh, yeah. So we just want to thank you guys for sticking around this long if you got to this point yeah yeah seriously uh so this is the first one obviously yep. thanks for listening and um you know we're still getting our feet wet and so thanks yeah. for bearing with us so hopefully this yeah. will sound a little smoother <laughs> in the futures but uh but yeah we'd like to thank you for listening and we'll hopefully catch you next week yeah.